Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live. You are watching a special uh, segment of our news broadcast uh, on Ukraine, the events that are happening in Ukraine uh, at this moment, what has happened in the past, and no doubt what may very well be the future events. Uh, I have actually taken the time to write out this broadcast. Uh, I will be actually reading a lot of the broadcast tonight. We have attempted twice to bring this information to your attention, and on both occasions, uh, there are certain entities, especially the entity in which we load our videos up at, uh, that we were banned worldwide for the content that we had in the videos. We were not in any way breaking any type of laws in doing so. We were perfectly in our legal limits and legal rights, but uh, my own account on YouTube was threatened that if I even tried to fight it, that I risk having my entire channel canceled. Uh, so just so, to let you know, we have tried to bring this information out. Uh, it, it's clear that the documentary that Russia has done, Crimea, The Way Back Home, is something that the world does not want you to know about. I might add, though, that it seems to be a blessing in one, rea one, one way that they did ban the video twice. It caused me to dig deeper. It caused me to find more information and to see exactly what is going on in Ukraine. So let's get started here. As I said, I'll be mostly reading from the transcript that I have written out myself. Uh, I spent the entire day preparing this for you. You know, I've, I've always, let me just start off by saying, you know, I've always been proud to be an American, an American citizen, but I am not proud of what the United States is doing along with its allies, uh, NATO allies, uh, in the country, uh, Ukraine. I know much like Russia, Russia denies sending in troops or uh, equipment to help eastern Ukraine, uh, and the United States has also denied helping neither the, them nor their NATO allies in helping the western Ukrainians. But it's just to the contrary. And of course, as the old saying goes in America, pot can't call kettle black. Uh, they both, no doubt, are doing these things. Russia, though, in their documentary, uh, clearly shows how they had to come to the aid of the Ukrainians who were Crimeans uh, because the majority of this particular little island nation or peninsula, as most people call it, uh, are, in fact, Russian descendants. They are, are, were part of the Russian Federation originally, and they have a very strong alliance to Russia. Um, but nonetheless, I, I am very uh, distraught over the fact of uh, the way that the United States has made an alliance with the Vatican's Crusades. Uh, and it's, this is clearly a Vatican crusade over Ukraine, just as it was over the former Soviet Union in this block, which Ukraine was part of that at that time. Um, Anyway, NATO and the European, uh, European Union all are a part of toppling world governments that do not hold to their ideology. It's one thing that's very clear that, you know, that I've discovered in the deeper research. If you do not acknowledge the Roman Catholic Church as both the head of the world's religious system and as well as the complete and dominant ruler of the states, then you are to be crushed. It's as simple as that. Dr. Paul Kingor who has written numerous books about Ronald Reagan, said that he was visited at his home by, uh, that is, Ronald Reagan was visited at, at his home uh, by Polish politicians, politicians uh, that wanted advice to know how to win elections. And of course, this was after uh, the former president, Ronald Reagan, had left office and uh, he had already gone back home, and after he had successfully through his, as it was quote-unquote called by Time Magazine, the Holy Alliance, uh, they had overthrown the Soviet Union, then there were politicians in Poland that came to his home to seek his advice. How does he win an election? Because it seemed that he was the mastermind for it. His answer was very shocking, though, um, according to uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Kingor. He states there that the former president uh, stated, listen to the Holy Spirit that speaks to you in your conscience. 
And this is what shocked me though. But then he turns right around and pointed to a picture on the wall of Pope John Paul II and stated, he is my best friend. So clearly, if the Holy Spirit was leading Ronald Reagan, he certainly did not lead him to Pope, uh, uh, Pope John Paul II. In fact, it is clear that it was not this leading of the Holy Spirit. Obviously, the inner voice seemed to confirm uh, for former President Reagan that the Pope of Rome was his earthly absolute. Um, according to the former President George Bush, in an interview, he stated when asked, um, this is something I think it's important for you to hear now, uh, when, he, when George Bush was asked in an interview, he stated what he saw when he looked, or they asked the question was asked him, what did he see when he looked into the eyes of Pope Benedict? And George Bush stated, un, un, with, with no uncertainty, he says, I see God. When we have presidents of the United States, one that claims that the Holy Spirit uh, is leading them, and that Pope John Paul II is his best friend, and then George Bush follows up and says that when he looks into the eyes of Pope Benedict, who was part of the Nazi party, he was actually part of it as a youth, he was part of the Nazi youth, uh, and he says, I see God when he looks in his eyes, something's wrong, something's majorly wrong. John Stockwell, the former director of the CIA, is also an author of uh, several books, uh, exposed the United States' as, uh, secret wars. In fact, uh, he also encourages you not to buy his book because he was sued for exposing the CIA and the covert operations and their constant uh, desire to topple uh, other nations. He said they sponsor worldwide coups on a regular basis. And in the lawsuit, he lost the lawsuit, and all of his proceeds from, the, from his books go directly to the CIA, all royalties, that is. So he doesn't want anyone to buy his book, but nonetheless, I think it's worth letting the CIA get the royalty because it would be good for you to know exactly um, the information that he has uh, exposed on the CIA and their, and their involvement there. Uh, I'd like for you to listen to a little bit about his, his own comments here what he has to say regarding um, the CIA, the United States' involvement in toppling these particular regimes. Out of two trillion dollars. The United States still has an open policy of supporting coups and destabilizations and low intensity conflicts in every corner of the, the globe. The U.S. doing this through the CIA, uh, my old organization. And as you all well know, our society is said to be drowning in a sea of drugs and integral to all of Now when you see here what John Stockwell has to say in regards to these things, think of the audacity that the United States and NATO have in accusing Russia for sending uh, troops or even equipment in uh, to help the people of East Ukraine. Well naturally Naturally, Russia will deny it, just as the United States denies many of its own secret wars and covert operations. We don't think that, you don't think for a moment that the United States is going to admit as playing a major role in the coup that actually toppled the president of Ukraine. You won't see it. Of course, the documentary that, uh, that uh, Russia has produced does clearly expose the United States' role in that and how that the U.S. Embassy in Kiev was also controlling military actions that were going on in Crimea. You know, here uh, at Israeli News Live, we are going to find out just how much freedom of speech and freedom of press is really available to us. This uh, special report, no doubt, is going to prove that, whether or not we have it or not, or whether or not uh, YouTube and, of course, uh, Google or Facebook or any of them will end up shutting down our information. In fact, I encourage you, uh, go on our channel. You have full right. Those of you that follow, support this ministry, that back us, uh, copy our videos, save them, uh, burn them to DVDs, share them with your friends. 
because we're certainly stirring up uh, some different groups that do not want you to know the information that you're hearing now. Uh, we are in a fight for truth. We're not in a fight for world dominance as the Vatican and her thugs are. The Vatican has always looked for the governments that it can partner with, uh, that have the ability for global dominance. Uh, this is why we saw Pope Pius XII the, the, uh, form an alliance with Hitler and his regime, uh, even while um, he was yet a cardinal. It's documented evidence. And his alliance with Hitler and the Vatican's uh, silence in order to exterminate the Jews of Europe became the central theme. There have been numerous counterfilms no doubt about it. I have a friend of mine that made one of those documentaries and books made to try and distance Rome from its true role with Nazi Germany. Uh, they claimed that uh, everything that was done showing Pope Pius XII being involved in uh, Nazi Germany and, and actually not just silence, he participated. Uh, not only w was he silent and allowed the Jew Jewish children and women and fathers and to be slaughtered and murdered by Hitler. But even after the war was over, the, uh, the church was very instrumental in what, what was called the rat lines, smuggling out thousands of war criminals, Germany's war criminals, into Argentina, the United States. And of course, the United States was wanting only the, the, the cream of the crop. They wanted the best. They wanted the scientists. They wanted the doctors. Imagine that. Uh, the pharmaceutical companies of America have profiteered from doctors that did experiments on Jews. Uh, it, not just Jewish people either. There, there were others that were in the concentration camps, but mainly Jews. Jews were their main guinea pigs that they used uh, for their experiments. And then they wanted this information to, to uh, be able to make drugs. And of course, that's where they went. That's exactly where they went. Um, Anyway, uh, Argentina was one of the main places that many of the war criminals were, were sent to. There, there, there have been um, uh, several uh, news organizations that have exposed this. And all, all one has to do is do a search on, especially on the, on the word Ratline. Ratline was the key uh, or the, the secret operation code name that the Vatican gave. They would hide the Nazi war criminals in convents all across uh, Europe as they would smuggle them out of the country. Um, according to Dr. Uh, Alberta Rivera, by the way, he, Dr. Albert, Alberta Rivera, is a, he is a former Jesuit. He was a Jesuit for 25 years. He was trained at the Vatican in Rome under Cardinal B. Uh, he said uh, he worked with infiltrating churches as well as government institutions. That's quote unquote. He was in an interview uh, and the question was asked him, uh, and the purpose for this infiltration, what was it for? And Dr. Alberto Rivera stated, the purpose for this infiltration is what the Roman Catholic system has all the time as for their own purpose is to infiltrate or to penetrate all areas of life where the Roman Catholic can have control and access over the coming new world government. Now, those of you that may not know about Dr. Alberto Rivera uh, and his past, you definitely should look it up. He's written books as well. Uh, there's many videos that were murdered. Um, and uh, he knew that that was coming. He knew that the, the Catholic Church would not uh, keep silent forever. It's what the Jesuits do. They like to kill people that uncover and expose them. And uh, so Dr. Rivera, he was, he was also killed as well. Uh, he goes on to say that the Vatican claims, uh, but, uh, claims both religi religious and political power over his church and as well his estate, the governments in which they control. Uh, this is the inside man that knows what goes on. Alberto Rivera revealed that the sign, and this was very important here, that the sign that the Jesuits would, would look for when they had conquered the United States because they had intended way back, even in the 1800s, that they wanted to conquer the United States. They did not conquer it in the beginning, so they were determined to do so. And uh, another good source for that is uh, uh, Father Chinicky's book. Uh, so he was a former Catholic as well. Uh, he was a bishop and he wrote about the Vatican's uh, uh, 
uh, secrets that they were doing at the top of the United States. He was a very close uh, friend of uh, former President Abraham Lincoln. In fact, Abraham Lincoln represented uh, Father Chinicky uh, in a case uh, that was against him. And uh, in his book, he reveals how that Abraham Lincoln also had spoke about how that the Jesuits would take would be the ones that he would have to fear. He said he doesn't have to fear the Southerners. He said they would fight him man to man on a battlefield. He said, but the Jesuits will end up taking and cutting cutting his throat from ear to ear, and then they would take and murder his wife and his children as well. And sure enough, it was proven later that it was a Jesuit that murdered Abraham Lincoln. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, uh, Alberto Rivera revealed to the world that the Jesuits were looking for the president that when he would be elected of the United States, that he would do his inauguration facing an obelisk. And in 1981, President Ronald Reagan was elected as president of the United States, and he did his inaugural vow facing the obelisk in Washington, D.C. Um, Ronald Reagan was the first president to, to take this oath facing this. And in 1982, this is what's interesting, in 1982, President Ronald Reagan met with Pope John Paul II. Imagine that. We see that the Rome has conquered the United States, and immediately he meets with uh, Pope John Paul II, and an alliance that was being formed to topple the Soviet Union. The aim between then Pope John Paul II and President Ronald Reagan was was to bring under control the former Eastern European states uh, like Poland, Romania, East Germany, and of course Ukraine. Since 1945, after the Second World War, Russia had controlled these states, but the Vatican was determined to have world dominance and many of the people living in these countries were Catholic. So a crusade began, or as Time Magazine called it, uh, the Holy Alliance. I actually had that magazine in my possession when it first when this first came out, and I knew then that it was certainly a demonic alliance. It was not a holy alliance, but it was a demonic alliance. And I remember reading the entire article. What was interesting is in the article in Time Magazine, it exposes also that everyone that was on Ronald Reagan's uh, team, all of his cabinet ministers, everyone involved in this particular um, coup to over to collapse the Soviet Union to take and bring the uh, former Eastern uh, uh, European states back uh, out from underneath uh, uh, communistic control were all Catholic people. This is good for even President Vladimir Putin to know, to know that he's not just fighting NATO, he's not just fighting the United States, he's fighting a crusade by Rome. In fact, the, uh, Dr. Paul Kengor, who actually wrote many books about Ronald Reagan and his life, his autobiography, um, Dr. Dr. King Gore, actually one of his books are, are entitled, um, or excuse me, is actually titled The Crusades, or excuse me, The Crusader, Ronald Reagan and the Fall of Communism. Anyway, time revealed that nearly all of Ronald Reagan's staff were Catholic, as I said. Dr. Ken Gore wrote numerous books on former President Ronald Reagan. He is a professor of political science at Grover City College. Uh, and get this one, this is what really blows you away. He is also visiting fellow at the Hoover Institution on War. Imagine that. Revolution and Peace at Stanford University. He authored several books, including, as I said, The Crusader, Ronald Reagan, and The Fall of Communism. He had some very interesting things to say how the Soviet Union was toppled and who were the key players. Uh, he was, uh, he gave this speech at Franciscan University. Um, and I want you to take a listen to this. I'm, I'm actually, I have, as you listen to what you're seeing here, we'll continue to monitor it on our little TV screen here in the background for you to see. Uh, and we, we're doing this. Uh, Behind the Iron Curtain, right? 1945. Solidarity in Poland was the very weapon for bringing this about. Reagan told the Pope in this June 1982 meeting, hope remains in Poland and we, working together, can keep it alive, can keep it alive. Now, maybe in the Q&A, I could go through exactly what they did, how they worked together. Um, among other things, a lot of intelligence sharing went on that we still don't know about. It's amazing how many of these documents are still classified, especially on the Vatican side, where they were classified for like 75 years. Uh, they, did, uh, they had their staffs meeting together constantly. 
There was one team, Bill Casey, the CIA director, who, as I said, was Catholic, Ambassador Rome Vernon Walters. is on a crusade, and they're on a crusade for world dominance. It's with, without a question, that's exactly what they're doing. And you may think that you have freedom of, uh, freedom of religion. You may even think that you have freedom of the press. Uh, anyone, though, that is a 501c organization does not have freedom of religion. You are dictated about what you can speak about. Now, if you look at the fine print, it is written in there, and there has been a delegation that has been going around to different churches. Uh, we've seen it ourselves, um, uh, as far as the videos of it, and they're explaining to the, to the churches that are 501Cs what they can and cannot say. And one is you cannot speak against the government that you belong to. You cannot speak against the Roman Catholic Church either. Now, that's a shocker, isn't it? Uh, you are forbidden to do any of these things because why? Now, they say there's a separation of church and state, but a 501c corporation is not a separation of church and state. You are owned by the state. And if you go outside of the parameters of the guidelines that the uh, U.S. government has set for you, they will come and shut you down and confiscate everything you own. The only way that you can really speak a slight bit of freedom is you have to be as if you were a business and pay taxes. But even then, they are looking to shut you up, as they did with us, where they banned our, 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 our information about Ukraine. And what's really going on in Ukraine, they banned us across the world because we wanted to share with you footage from uh, Russia's own documentary that they did, Crimea, The Way Back Home. They did not want anyone in the world seeing what's really going on. Now, granted, even as an American, I do like freedom of religion. I do like freedom of speech. I do like all these things, but this is only a smokescreen because I'm finding that out, that they just use other means to shut you up. And if that doesn't work, then they kill you, like they did Alberto Rivera. They killed him because why? He spoke against the Vatican, and the Vatican was not going to have that. Russia, on the other hand, they're just blatant about it. They're, 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 they're not a hypocrite. Let me just say that. The, the, the Russian nation is not a hypocrite. They have maybe a little bit of freedom of speech, but they'll let you know. They also control what you say. You start to get out of line or it looks like that you're going to bring in a revolution. Yes, they're going to shut you down. And they do have a state-ran religion, the Russian Orthodox Church. And they make no bones about that either. So in this case, I'd have to say the Russians are not hypocritical about what they stand for, what they believe. But when it comes to Rome and their crusades, it's very sly. It's very evil. It's very wicked. And they have intended to overthrow Ukraine. You're going to see why in a few, mo few moments. And because we have stood... It's, it, this is, see, to me, it's not a matter of are we standing with Russia... Oh, you're communist. No, it has nothing to do with that. We're standing for what's right and for the principles. The people of East Ukraine are being murdered. Murdered by the Western Ukrainians in Kiev, by the, by the uh, regime that toppled a legal government. And you may not like that I say it that way, but think of it like this here. Barack Obama, by many Americans is definitely not appreciated. Many Americans, including myself, are completely against his way of thinking and his, his politics. But we do not do a coup and overthrow the President of the United States. We have an, we have an option of impeachment, but that has a, it has a process that must be done. And that's the way things should be carried out. But it's not the way it was carried out in Ukraine. Why? We'll get into that in a few minutes. I'll share that with you exactly why it was not done that way. First, let me take you down through some, some information here. In a short look at the history of Ukraine, in 1991, Ukraine became independent from Russia. They were one of the Soviet states, former Soviet states, that became independent. Their own state, as it was in Poland, they began to have their own free elections. Pope John Paul II made a visit to the country, and by the way, Dr. Alberto Rivera has always clearly stated that when the Pope of Rome visits a land, he has actually conquered that land. That is a sign that he has control of the land. Now, as far as I know of, at least in modern history, 
I don't think the Pope of Rome has ever visited Russia, as far as I know of. Um, at any rate, though, in Ukraine, however, over the next two decades, through several elections, we find that there were more pro-Russian Ukrainians that opted for leaders that would keep closer ties to Russia. They were Russian Orthodox, and therefore the loyalty was not to Rome. Now, when I say Russian Orthodox, most of the people in, in, in Ukraine uh, are not Orthodox Catholic. They're not uh, Roman Catholic, I should say, but they're, they're Russian Orthodox. In fact, the two friends that I do have from Ukraine, one being Russian and one being Ukrainian, not being Russian descent, both of them are Russian Orthodox by religion. So therefore, even as Vladimir Putin stated in his documentary, that this was a war over religion and over ethnicity. I wished I would have had a copy of that for you to see that, but that's something you have to take my word on unless somehow you're able to get a hold of that uh, documentary and see it for yourself. Um, Anyway, uh, it, also, the Vatican had to turn its military arm, the United States and NATO, and its NATO allies uh, uh, that are loyal to the Vatican to make a change in Ukraine. And perhaps, as President Obama would say, change that you could believe in. Because why? The Ukrainian government was not fully in cooperation with the Vatican's ideology. Now, Viktor Yanukovych, uh, who was the president in 2011, he was elected president. Excuse me, he was elected president in 2011, and in February of 2014 is when the coup, backed by the West, actually overthrew uh, his government. A careful orchestrated coup is is what toppled him um, from power. But why did they even need a coup in the first place? We saw he had clearly been elected by the people in 2011. This is evident uh, because he had lost the election for the president in 2004. So the people voting clearly seem, I know there's, there's a lot of people that say, well, the, the elections are rigged. Well, if he didn't win in 2004, there definitely was not a rig there, was there? So the people are voting, and in 2011, they voted him in. But, you know, Yanukovych, he just wasn't doing what Rome wanted. <sighs> President Yanukovych was pro-Russian, something that stood, it stood in the way of Rome's plan of a new world order. As we clearly see, uh, as you clearly saw earlier uh, in the footage that I shared with you there uh, about Pope John Paul II and their intent, or excuse me, as Dr. Uh, Alberto Rivera said, they're, they're bent on a one world government. Um, President Yanukovych, he, his main supporters are from southeastern Ukraine. And this is one reason why we see that the coup that has actually taken over, Poroshenko, uh, who is now considered to be uh, the president of Ukraine, who did this in an illegal coup, uh, this is why you see his backers murdering all the Eastern Ukraine, uh, excuse me, all the Eastern Ukrainians in, in that part of the region. And, and the reason why, because they want to make sure that when they have people to vote next time around, that there are no supporters that would support any pro-Russian ideas. And, and, and here's the other thing that really boggles the mind to, 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 to no end. The United States, the Vatican, and NATO, her allies, the European Union as a whole. Why is it that when a government, a legal government is toppled, that they immediately run to the aid of the government or the, or the people that overthrew the government? Why didn't they run to the aid of, you know, uh, uh, of Yon, Yon, President Yokonovich? I mean, is, there's something wrong with this picture, isn't it? The United States, who claims to believe in democracy, as soon as the, 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 the government is toppled there, instead of backing uh, President uh, Yukon, uh, excuse me, Yanu, Yanukovych, instead of backing him and staying neutral in this situation, they immediately are supportive of Poroshenko. They immediately are supportive of his, new, his sidekick, his new, the, the new prime minister. Catholics, of course. 
And they immediately begin to blame Russia for everything that's going on. Russia didn't start the coup. The only thing that Russia did was try to protect the citizens that were being slaughtered in eastern Ukraine. And of course, in Crimea, where it was mostly Russians, they were there to try to prevent a massacre of the civilian population, which clearly was on their list. President Yanukovych uh, said, Ukraine's integration with the EU remains our strategic aim. And this is what he said when he was president back in 2010. Or excuse me, in, in 2010, he says this in, a, in an inter interview on, um, on Radio Free Europe. He says that, again, I'll repeat it, Ukraine's integration with the EU remains our strategic aim and a balanced policy which will protect our national interests both on our eastern border, I mean with Russia, and of course with the European Union. He stated, like I said, this was on Radio Free Europe, November 22nd, 2010. This was, his, this was his downfall. Because you see, the European Union, who is ran by the Vatican as the new Roman Empire revived, was, was not going to allow Russia's influence. And they did not want to see a balance. Just like you are seeing now, they're bent on going back, breaking the Minsk Agreement on February the 12th, where there was going to be, they're supposed to be given a self-autonomy for the Ukraine people in the East, the self-proclaimed uh, People's Republic. Uh, they're not going to, to allow that. They're going to take it all back. That's why we see the United States sending mass amounts of equipment and troops, as well as 11 European nations are also sending troops and weapons to fight, what, the Eastern, Don, uh, the Eastern people in Don, Donetsk? No, they're planning on fighting Russia because Russia has determined they're going to protect their people. Of course, this was his downfall, as I said, because Rome was not going to share power with Russia. His major downfall with Rome came in July of 2013 when he stated in the Ukrainian Weekly in an article entitled Mission Impossible, which is kind of a, an irony in itself that the article was called Mission Impossible. All churches and religious organizations are equal for the state. We respect the choice of our citizens and guarantee everyone's constitutional right to freedom of religion. That was music for the Jewish people's ears. We will not allow the use of churches and religious organizations by some political forces for their narrow interests. This also refers to foreign centuries through which religious organizations sometimes seek to affect the internal political situation in Ukraine. Now, if that doesn't tell you that Rome was meddling in their politics, I don't know what does. This, as he stated, this is a matter of the state's national security. President, the president could not be more clear of Rome's intention to topple the Ukrainian government in that statement there in 2013. And of course, within a year, they did a coup and overthrew him. It was clear by Rome that even though he had a desire to join the EU, they would not tolerate his idea of equality, neither ethnicity nor religion. And if that wasn't enough, uh, Yanukovych started to turn against the alliance with the EU in favor of Putin's new Eurasian Customs Union. In fact, this is something that, that Putin began to, to put together as an alternative um, uh, in, in the, in, in, I, I say an alternative because why? Clearly the European uh, Union had, had brought together a union for them to be able to do uh, trade within themselves. The United States had the, 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 uh, the trade between Canada and Mexico. And so Putin was doing the same to join forces for the nations that were uh, allies of his to do trade. So he formed uh, what was called the the um, uh, the Eurasian Customs Union, and uh, Yanukovych wanted to be a part of that, and that really set everything off. That's when uh, NATO and its allies said this cannot happen any longer. The Rome would not tolerate that whatsoever. So, and one thing that uh, I regret when I was actually copying the footage of the documentary uh, that was done by Russia, state, Russian state television there, 
they actually had footage of even an SS flag that the Ukrainian soldiers uh, from Kiev were actually carrying. By the way, that's their National Guard because he couldn't trust the actual military because there were too many people in the military that were still loyal to uh, the pres President uh, Yanukovych. Uh, so he had to start his own military wing, which of course NATO and their allies were more than glad to provide him with uh, troops and uh, and even his own uh, private security are British special uh, special uh, security force from from Britain, and uh, but the fact that they're even on their armbands they're wearing a form of the Nazi emblem, and this is Kiev's National Guard. It only brings to my memory here that when the riots were happening in Kiev in February of 2014. Uh, Ukrainian rabbi Moshe Reuven Osman asked Kiev Jews to leave the city and, if possible, the country, due to fears the Jews might be targeted in the ongoing chaos. Uh, the Israel National News reported uh, that some Jewish shops have been vandalized and threats to the Jewish community have been received. Now, the rabbi also specifically said, he, he speaks of it as being, uh, I forget the word that he used, but it's like the word thugs, uh, we'd say in English, uh, that uh, the ones that were actually toppling the government were, were his concern. Uh, I know that the media tried to make it look the other way around, but that was not the case. Um, but uh, before the governments removed uh, the documentary by Russia, uh, Crimea, The Way Home, I was able to view this documentary in its entirety. I think I mentioned this to you at the beginning of the program. The West is saying that the film is only Russian propaganda, and if this be so, then I must ask the question, why has it been banned worldwide? Uh, I, I've seen the documentary, so therefore I know what is in it. And it's very damning to the United States uh, and their involvement. Uh, there were documents that were recovered in Crimea where some of the Ukrainian forces were there. In fact, one particular unit we'll go into a little bit later that um, the Russians had to take by force. And um, it implicates the United States' involvement there. Uh, Russia, as they talk about their, their, you know, they have their way of being able to spy, just like the United States does, to gather intel. Uh, they had gathered, gathered the intel. They knew who was communicating with who. Uh, they knew that they were trying to assassinate uh, Yanukovych. Uh, the president Yanukovych was trying to be assassinated. And uh, Russia, frankly, had to get him out of the country. First he goes to Crimea, but when they saw that his life was in peril, regardless of where he was, uh, and Putin give him the option if he wanted to go to Russia, he could go to Russia, which he ended up having to opt for him and his family to go to Russia in that regards there. But the West uh, uh, and NATO and their allies do not want you to see this documentary clearly because of the evidence that they brought in there. They use real footage, uh, and, and that's, what's, that's what's damning for them completely. You know, after... Uh, President Viktor Yanukovych uh, was toppled. Petro, uh, Petro Poroshenko was brought in uh, by a supposed election as the new prime minister. It seems he faced little opposition in his election because the coup that was loyal to him were uh, busy killing those who did not agree with him. So there wasn't, you didn't have to worry about too many people being in opposition with him being elected as the new prime minister, or excuse me, the president in this case, of uh, Ukraine because, as I said, they were busy killing off all those people that were loyal to uh, President Yanukovych uh, to make sure there was no one that could vote uh, against him. And, uh, and of course, they, they certainly weren't going to, to put up anybody as a candidacy that would be pro-Russian in, in, the, in the first place. Uh, and, and there again, as I said, you know, I, I wouldn't want to live under a communistic rule myself, but I'm finding more and more that what we are coming under, under the Roman rule that is going across the world, is by far will be much worse than communism is, by far. Um, anyway, what I want to share with you now is from the documentary, Crimea, The Way Back Home. And Many of the Crimeans that had, that had participated in a rally in support of uh, President uh, Yanukovych uh, and, and, and against the topple of his government 
And these were all unarmed men that had come from Crimea, that, that had been in a, in a rally uh, that was, that, like I said, that was in support. They were headed back home to Crimea. They were being police escorted. And about halfway back to Crimea, the police escorted them intentionally into an ambush. This is the actual, um, what is actually recorded in the documentary. I have written word for word what was said by those that were witnesses of that, including their names, uh, et cetera. The only person I don't have a name for was the, uh, the person that was doing the main interviewing throughout the entire documentary. Uh, unfortunately, and, and to my regret, I wished I had his name, but I never was able to get that. I don't seem to have that in any of the footage that I, that I captured on this. But let me just share with you what it says here. The narrator starts off saying thousands of unprotected people were already feeling the consequences after capturing Kiev. Nationalists started a manhunt on everyone who doesn't agree with their methods of gaining power. And then Roman uh, Yakovlev recounts the events. This was on February the 20th. We were on our way back home. And then a second man comes on. The road was blocked off. I don't know what to call them. They were like monsters. Then the narrator says, on the day when the snipers took control of Maiden, regular people were coming back home to Crimea from Kiev. They were coming back from so-called anti-maiden. Peaceful demonstrations where Crimeans unarmed were trying to convey an opinion different from Euro-maiden. That was the people that had toppled uh, President Yan Yanukovych. They were called Euro-maiden uh, because they were for the European Union. Ukrainian police cars that took the bus column, which by the way was about six buses from what I can see in the actual footage there, under escort halfway, drove them into an ambush. Alexander uh, Bortkorov, a victim, recounts that fateful day. The column was blocked from two sides, and the most awful began. Guys armed with bats, some of them were drunk, some were high. Then Roman Yako Yakovlev continued. Suddenly, a guy with a shotgun popped out and started shooting point blank. Another witness, Alex uh, Grib Gribnev, stated, our driver was shot right there on the front seat. Yakovlev continued his account. They started breaking glass. Then Alex, Alexander Belial, the bus passenger, he jumps back in. For, first they were stoning the bus, then they started shouting, get out! If you don't, we will burn you alive. By the way, in Odessa, they did burn dozens of people alive. The narrator says, it was hard to get out of the situation in one piece and surely impossible if a Russian flag was found or slogans like, we won't hand over Crimea to Bandera or just photos on a phone portraying atrocities on Maiden. Mikhail Gopola, who was a passenger, stated, I removed memory cards both from my phone and camera and put them under my tongue in the photos of my family and photos of the deeds of these people on Maiden. I could swallow them at a moment just to save my family. Then Alexei uh, Grebnev continued, when we rushed out of the bus, we were thrown into a ditch nearby on top of another and beaten, and our guys laying there shot to death. There were six dead as they drug out the driver and put him next. Alexander uh, Bailey continued, They forced us to sing the Ukrainian anthem, Shout glory to Ukraine, while beating us with bats. I have seven stitches on my head. Mikhail Gupola continued, We were sitting in groups. They were picking our people and forced some to put broken glass in their clothes, in their pockets, and some were forced to eat the glass. The interviewer, who was in shock when he heard this, asked, they forced you to eat glass? Gopalo answered, people picked up the glass and ate it because everyone wanted to get out alive. Alexander Balai, uh, Bali, maybe that's how you pronounce his name, continued, some of, some of the guys tried to run off in the fields. I personally witnessed them being shot with a shotgun. He dropped, and I don't know if that man is still alive. I don't know. The narrator continued in the narration. He, 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 
Um, the crowd exulted from the side of the burning bus. And while the maiden supporters were occupied with the circuits they created, Crimeans that survived got a chance to run like hell, as he quotes. They didn't help everyone either. Nationalists raided nearby fields and forests for survivors very diligently. That was the end of that particular section there. President Vladimir Putin made it quite assuredly known that he knew for a fact that the United States was involved in the coup that toppled President uh, Yokonovich. Uh, he also believed that the United States was involved uh, in different military uh, operations that were also going in and helping uh, the new uh, regime that had taken, taken over. In the documentary, um, Vladimir Putin says, uh, excuse me, uh, excuse me, uh, said about the special marine unit that was operating, uh, that was actually operating in Crimea. He said this about it. This unit officially took up duty in Theodosia within rapid deployment forces of NATO. And then they begin to read from the official documents and it's stated here, here are the targets, passports of the partnerships under the code L0318 forward air controllers. What aims these officers in Crimea would point to NATO? Air forces. We can only guess. And here is, is L0001 land operations. Actually, that's L0001 land operations. The Russian officer Alexander, Alexander uh, Ostrikov, deputy commander of the Black Sea Fleet Russian Federation, continues, as he states, they didn't have any other goal that instead of acting on their own behalf of their own, but a foreign state in the situation they were in at that moment. Then he's asked the question, whom they were liaisoning with? Who were they li liaisoning with? In other words, who were the, uh, the, the, this Marine unit liaisoning with? Ostry uh, Ostrikov continues, they were in touch with representatives of the Consulate General of the United States in Kiev. They were receiving orders from them directly. You have to keep in mind now, Russia was monitoring communications, something Putin had brought out also in this particular film. They had been monitoring communications. Uh, this is one of the reasons why they were claiming they knew these things. And everything was aimed on using armed force on civilian residents of Theodosia. Deputy Commander of uh, Ostrikov concluded. Russia continued negotiations and blocking of the unit for three weeks. Uh, this was the Marine unit, that is. Afterwards, a message was picked up. Uh, Ukraine Marines are preparing armed breakthrough to Theodosia. Large amounts were wired to bank accounts of their commanders, as promised by U.S. Consulate General Deputy Commander Ostrakov uh, continued. We had to use soft force in order to eliminate this hotbed of tension, which existed in Feodosia. And, you know, I, I guess we might have to say this is, the, uh, this is what is alleged in the Russian documentary. Uh, we have no way of proving this ourselves, but this is what they have reported on in their in their. Uh, in their information. On March 24th, on 20, uh, year 2014, the storm had begun, that it was the storm of the Marines that were at the base there in Theodosia, or near Theodosia. Three hours before dawn, Russian special forces were to meet, uh, which meant they were going to go head to head. The most efficient Ukrainian unit Marines who followed 22 training programs in eight NATO countries on the best basis at Lackland and Fort Benning in the USA. Live ammunition fire was only at the arms room to prevent NATO partners from getting armed. Now that was actually what uh, was stated in the documentary by Ostro uh, Ostrikov. He actually stated that on this documentary. The fact that Russia claims that this unit was going to target civilians is clearly a tactic of the Vatican Crusades. Now, there's no doubt about that. This is the way the Vatican does it. There's multiple sources on the internet recorded by uh, Eastern Ukraines of atrocities committed by the National Guard of Poroshenko. And you can see these now. You can see the clips that I've included here for you. They have attacked these people by aircraft with bombs. In fact, in one of these uh, videos that have been loaded by 
the civilians from eastern Ukraine, they actually say that the uh, fighter jet is using cluster bombs. Now, there's no way for us to be able to independently verify that at all, but clearly you can see the jet uh, shooting out uh, from the plane, the bombs, and it does appear to look like cluster bombs, and they have a camera monitoring on the ground. Uh, it, was, it was no doubt a surveillance camera of some sort uh, in that area near a town square, and suddenly you see the bombs go off, and of course, just scores of people were wounded from it. Um, so we want you to, we're sharing that with you, is what you're seeing now, is footage from that. Uh, in 2014, NATO allies led by the United States entered into the Black Sea. Now this is something I want you to pay close attention to. It was supposedly to conduct naval drills. That's what the world was told by the media, that the, that, uh, the U.S. and the NATO allies were going into the Black Sea to, to, to conduct naval drills. But Russia pointed out in uh, their account of the events on their documentary that NATO and her allies were coming to take Crimea. The world at this time, and even now, was at the brink of war. And that's what's about to happen even now. We may only be days away, hours away, of Ukraine plunging into a major war. In fact, when, um, I'll go into that in a moment with you. This could bring us on the brink of World War III, without a doubt. Russia, they did reenact the moment of the standoff between the sides, and this is what it says on their documentary. The radar screen of the Moskov cruiser, the flagship of the Black Sea Fleet, clearly showed the U.S. destroyer steadily approaching the Crimean shores within the firing range of its tomahawks covering the peninsula, speaking of Crimea. Suddenly, Svestopol coastal defense switched on the monolit radar, which is part of the uh, Bastion system. Information source uh, monolit target type cruiser. Target identification, foe. They re re reiterate back, foe. Russia was using its supersonic missiles that can be stopped, that cannot, excuse me, that cannot be stopped by the Iron Dome, according to what Russia has stated. Um, they claimed that they were using this as a deterrent, and Vladimir Putin clearly made it known that he did not want to see bloodshed, but they actually positioned these particular uh, systems that, that Russia had to where satellites could see them so that they would know that they were there and that they were, they were going to pr protect Crimea and the Russian people that lived in Crimea from any type of aggression or invasion, whether it be from land, air, or sea. President Vladimir Putin reveals just how serious the matter became in the documentary as well. And the question is asked to him, when you talked with Western leaders, was it clear to you right away that there wouldn't be any military interference from their side. President Putin responds, of course not. This couldn't be clear right, right away. That's why at the first stage I had to give certain directions to our armed forces. Not only directions, but direct orders about the possible action of Russia and our armed forces in, pos in, in possible events. This is, by the way, as it was reported in many news sources around the world, that Vladimir Putin let the world know that nuclear war was an option. The interviewer's surprise asked, do your words imply that our nuclear forces were also put on standby? Putin responds, we were prepared to do that. I talked to the colleagues and was open with them just as I am with you now. This is our historic territory. There live Russian people. They are in danger now. We can't leave them alone. It was not us who staged the coup. It was done by the nationalists and people with far-right views. You supported them, but where do you live? Thousands of miles away. Putin, by the way, is referring to the United States. But we live here, and it's our land. What do you want to fight for there? You don't know, do you? In fact, President Putin, most Americans, they don't know. They have no idea either that the United States is actually, or that the United States was actually heavily involved in the coup process. He says, but we do know 
We are ready for it. This is an honest and open position. That's the way it is. So I don't believe anyone wanted to fan some world conflict out of it, but we were not looking for a fight. They, speaking of the U.S. and NATO, simply forced us to take these actions. And I repeat, we were ready for the worst case scenario. Again, referring to nuclear war. But I presumed it wouldn't happen. It was unnecessary to aggravate the situation too much. Now we see NATO is once again, they're amassing their troops to Ukraine. The new government that has overthrown President Yanukovych is digging in and preparing for a major war. Arseniy uh, Yatinyuk is clearly the Vatican's uh, puppet. He is, he is the prime minister and he has vowed to take back Eastern Ukraine. We know that he's a puppet of the Vatican because he's already been to Pope Francis. You don't think Pope Francis isn't doing like Pope John Paul II was? Sure he is. See, they didn't get control of Ukraine like they got control of the rest of the Eastern bloc of Europe that were former Soviet states. So Rome is there to finish the job. Anyway, Eastern Ukraine and uh, to crush the agreement uh, is determined to crush the agreement that was signed in Minsk. And of course, Rome will not let him down. NATO has military convoys stretching for miles, and it is on their way to, to across Europe in a show of force. But the reality is they will go to sacrifice innocent civilians on the altar of Baal. That's what the reality of this is. It is sad to see what Americans have believed what I have always believed as I grew up when I was younger is the United States was a true democratic country and that we supported a democratic, a, a democracy of values. But as I've grown older, I've also learned just how wicked the elite system is. And that we really do not have a voice in America. For that matter, does anyone have a voice anywhere in the world? I don't want you living under a cloud or a delusion that we are free. The Vatican has made it their purpose to also take over Israel. Recently, the United States was also involved in overthrowing the elections and overthrowing Prime Minister Netanyahu from office. Although it has disappointed me to see the Prime Minister go to the Vatican and even look for the Vatican's help. Clearly, Prime Minister Netanyahu, the Vatican is not on your side. If you only read Ezekiel 35, you will see that his intention is to take our land to take Israel from us. The Ukrainians on, on the eastern side, I, 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 let me say this, I, I would be more for the dividing of Ukraine than anything. I clearly understand there are Ukrainians that want to be part of the EU, that want to have the values of the European Union. And if they're not going to restore Ukraine back to the president uh, that was in there to start with, then they should divide the country. It shouldn't be a genocide by the West and their allies to come in there and to murder all the innocent civilians just so they can get a popular vote because they've annihilated all the uh, protests. And I can't say as if I blame Russia if they back the people of eastern Ukraine. Because it seems that President Putin is just trying to do that. He's trying to protect his people. He's trying to protect them from genocide. And that's sad. I never thought, as an American from democratic values that we were raised with in the United States, that I would actually support Russia in something that they're doing. But in this case here, it comes down to a matter of what is ethical and what is right. 
This situation in Ukraine did not have to be toppled. It could have been done by politics. If they did not agree with the, the president, Yanukovych, if they didn't agree with him, they could have voted him out of office. But the problem seems to be is there's a lot of Russian Orthodox people living in Ukraine that do not support the idea of the European Union, perhaps. And so that was an obstacle. So instead, the United States gets itself involved in coups, as the former CI director pointed out to us. It's sad. It's very sad. The only way that we will ever have an honest and true government is when Messiah comes on the scene and rules with a rod of iron. I'm Stephen Benoon, special segment on Ukraine, the Ukrainian crisis with Israeli News Live. I would love to say shalom. Aval, even as it is in Israel, but in Shalom, there is no peace. Good evening.